Want to know the secret to all load development and how to lower your SD? It's load density. But first, let's talk about some misconceptions about velocity nodes and how this will play into this. They aren't real. I know it's controversial, but let's think about it. Because I fell into the same trap until I was taught better by our ballistician and it opened up my eyes to see the light and demystify the age old paradigm when actually testing it. Everyone says that there is a velocity flat spot, which is created by a 10 feet per second difference between one charge weight and the next, but neglects to think about the environmental effect of propellants playing a vital role in determining a velocity node. Well, if you pick a velocity node that has a 10 feet per second window, the minute you go out and shoot in any other environmental conditions, your velocity will change and therefore will mean you are out of your node now from whenever you determined it. This also applies to temperature stable powders. And unfortunately, they're not as temp stable as you think for a reason, which we will explain in another video or what you may read about it from a test online. As an example, let's say you shoot 40, 40.2, 40.4, and 40.6 grains of powder. We can see there's a flat spot between 40.2 and 40.4 grains. The delta, or the flat spot, has a 10 feet per second difference in between each other, which creates the flat spot on our graph. Now, if we test the same ladder test on a different day, or simply raise our sample size per charge weight, the velocities will all change based on the environmental conditions alone. This is an inherent problem with low sample size testing because without raising your sample size, it gives the false illusion of what so many have believed to be an actual node, but fail to retest it with larger sample sizes, or in other words, a ton of more rounds after determining an area of interest. We can see this very apparently with one shot load development ladder test. How do we know looking at this graph and looking at the 40.2 charge weight and 40.4 that this one shot, which was the fifth in this five shot sample for 40.2 grains, is actually going to be the velocity we would compare to 40.4's fifth shot. Because at this point, you have a one in five chance of yielding any of these velocities you shot at this charge weight to use to determine a quote unquote velocity node. Why not this number three shot to number two? How do you know which velocity is going to be the one you yielded if you only shot once, which is going to be used to compare to another velocity and the following charge weight? There's a massive difference and velocity will completely change with environmentals. The same logic still applies with low sample size testing of just five rounds when considering velocity node testing logic. Now, if environmentals are introduced, it will change the velocity on you each time you perform the same test. See the picture? Your velocity is always changing and will climb in a linear line when using the high sample size testing. Here for an example, the same ladder test was conducted on the same day. Same load, same everything, but just different environmentals throughout the day from 70 to 80 degrees. And take a look at the results. It doesn't match up. There's no flat spot reoccurring anywhere. Now let's talk about the key, which is load density. The burn rate of propellant is the most vital thing to understand and the kernel shape as well. This comes into play when filling up your case and the amount of gas generation being produced to yield pressures that propel the projectile out of your barrel. If the shape is different, it will settle differently in your case, similar to how marbles fill up a glass versus sand. Now, in regard to burn rate, Powders that have an excessive burn rate for your cartridge when trying to achieve high load densities are not an ideal choice and of course will not work properly. That's why we have certain burn rate powders for a reason. And don't forget, burn rates are relative. Powders of the same burn rate will yield different velocity, pressure, and load density comparing the same propellant charge weight to another. Regardless, picking the right propellant is of utmost importance when trying to achieve high case fill you have to choose a propellant with a high load density that will yield moderate pressures with your given cartridge and bullet. We teach current students how to figure all of this out, like determining the correct propellant analytically, what case fill percentage is best for certain cartridges, what yields precision, 
and why not to use published load densities on Gordons and quick load because there is a lot of issues with lot to lot variation and most importantly, actually how to keep your cartridge in tune over time. The same applies with load manuals publishing load density percentages. It's not going to be the same as your current powder lot, especially if you're messing with seating depth testing. If you change your seating depth, this affects the internal available volume inside of your case and therefore changes your case fill. Regardless, what you will end up seeing when you achieve the right density with the right propellant is back to back to back low SD. And you can simply choose whichever powder charge you want. Again, velocity will always change, but your SD will always remain in single digits with high sample size testing. But how? The reason for low density being the key is because of uniform ignition. Think about it. If you have a case with very low load density, your powder lays at the bottom of the case or is positioned near the primer or back end of the projectile. If you know anything about SAMI testing in labs, you know how vital this is and how powder positioning alone can change PSI generation. Check out this example from Western Reloading Manual number one and also highlights on why primers are not a reliable way to look at pressure. Regardless, if case fill is low and moving around, powder position at the back end towards the primer will generate a higher PSI opposed to powder position at the front end of the cartridge near the projectile. So if we are generating different amounts of pressure each time because of low load density and pressure and gases are propelling your projectile down your barrel, that means your velocity is going to be erratic because your pressure is erratic. On top of that, if your cases have varying amounts of volume, this affects pressure generation and load density as well. This is why it is always advised to sort by head stamp or simply by higher quality brass because the volume is very consistent. Nonetheless, by yielding a high case fill or high loading density, it yields uniform ignition, which allows for uniform pressure generation and velocity output. Simple as that. No magic rabbit holes, no magic fairy dust. Now, as many won't show you, when talking about the keys to load development or velocity nodes before, here are three separate occasions on different days shooting 90 rounds in a row with 10 warmers. Take a look at the average velocity difference and SD. This is universal for all cartridges. Something we guarantee in our one-on-one -on -one courses is being able to load up 40 rounds, find a solid load density, and get to work. The results we talked about today are guaranteed or your money back. But most importantly, we provide you with the utmost confidence in your ammunition when competing because you will now have the ability to retain single digit SD with very high sample sizes. Today, we just highlighted or skimmed the surface on what is going on with internal ballistics and what yields low SD. However, there is so much more that needs to be accounted for accurately or a lot can get lost in the noise and not yield good results if you don't know how to properly choose, calibrate, or understand why you are getting certain results and how to fix them, which we can show you. Again, thanks for watching, and I can't wait for the roasting session. All I ask before you start thinking I'm the Antichrist is just try it. You're going to get some really good results. Thanks again for watching.